morning, Bretov. Mr. Robash. Wind from due east again. Yes, sir. Like every other morning. And the rain, of course. You must take in some sail. Yes, sir. Where's Lombayev? He, uh, he went into the fog, sir. Into the fog? All night, sir. Like every other, no wind, dense fog. And? What's your report? Lombayev saw something move, sir. For it there. He went to investigate. And where is he now? Can't say, sir. He went into the fog. Never came out. The Voyage of the Demeter by Robert Forrest with Finlay Welsh, Gary Lewis, Stephen McNichol, Grant O'Rourke and Alexander Morton. The Voyage of the Demeter. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is, yes, power. His voice is power. His voice is majesty. The voice of the Lord echoes over the waters. The God of glory thunders. In each temple all cry glory. No, not blood. Not glory and blood. In each temple all cry glory. No, wrong. No blood. Who are you? Kaneski! Kaneski, get in here! Huh? That damn cat of yours, get him out! I'm sorry, Captain, I, I didn't know he was in here. Come on, Johnny, out! The beast was sitting in my chest. Out, Johnny. Sitting in my chest like a damn... like a... Succubus? <sighs> Incubus? If one's male, the other female. Johnny's a tom. The voice of the Lord echoes over the waters. The Lord is over the mighty waters in his temple. All cry glory. <laughs> Morning prayer, sir. A psalm. In my dream. A voice. A sneering voice. Coffee, sir? Yes. Strong. We're in rough weather again. Yes, sir. We went from fog and calm to this in a matter of minutes, <sighs> just as the sun came up. Strange waters. Surely. When did this happen? An hour ago, maybe. An hour? Why didn't you raise the alarm? I couldn't seem to find my voice or take my hands off the wheel. You're a miserable specimen of a sailor, Bretton. Wasn't always, sir. A coward, do you hear me? Clearly, sir. A miserable, superstitious coward. Begging your pardon, Mr. Robash, but it's no superstition to say that's the third man vanished. It's hard fact. I can understand their feelings, Mr. Robash. Never mind their feelings, sir. It's the reason I want them to use. We've been at sea how long? Just over 20 days? 23. Right. We left Varna on the 6th of July, 23 days. And in that time, we've lost three men with no explanation for any of them. It's no explanation to say there's a stranger aboard. Some phantom no one's laid eyes on. Lambayev saw something... Bretov says he claimed to see movement in the fog. A shift of the light, a, a touch of breeze that moved the fog itself. Any number of things. Three men. Sir, we're in a two-masted schooner, not a large ship. We're almost entirely in ballast of white sand. Our only cargo, 25 wooden crates. Before we came through the Dardanelles, several were opened at random by Turkish officials. Nothing amiss was found. And anyway... They're all nailed, firmly closed. Yes, I know. Then where could this stranger hide? Nowhere I can think of. A simple reason, sir. Indeed. But all the same, order a thorough search of the ship. Sir. My crew have felt something was wrong on this ship from the day we sailed, long before the first man disappeared. They say they expected something like this to happen. Oh, they say that now, with the hindsight of superstition. It's hard reason they need. And discipline, not indulging their peasant imaginations. A thorough search, Mr. Robash, stem to stem. You lead the party, 
And you go armed. Take this. Yes, sir. He's different. Surely. He's Romanian. The rest of us are Russian. It's more than that. I know lots of Romanians. No one like him. Never know any man like him. First mate Robash is a fine sailor. He knows the sea and he knows ships. No more than Captain Rebelsky. But he knows men as well. I sometimes wonder if Robash is a man. I'm Jewish, Kineski. I know you are, Bretov. Out of the way, Johnny! We've a legend in our old books. The Golem. And what's that? An imitation man. Made of clay or whatever. And then brought to life to be a servant to a powerful rabbi. An automaton kind of thing. Or is it a simulacrum? And sometimes I think our first mate is something like that. With his reason and his logic and his science. All good things. Not without feelings or not. Not without something human behind him. Surely. What are you making? No. Mutton broth and biscuits. Oh, again? I wish our guest would make your mutton disappear. And you never cease from complaining, Bretta. I like complaining. Always have. But I've always been a good specimen of a sailor. A no coward. Troubled with nerves, maybe, but not a coward. He called you that? <sighs> Phil, I've been on this ship for a year. Mutton every day. Uh, you've had chicken as well, and it's only been three weeks. And a man gone for every week. We'll have no crew left by the time we reach. Where is it? Whitby. From stem to stern, Mr. Robash. And back again, sir. Every comma. And you found nothing amiss? All correct, sir. No stowaway. Then who is killing my men? Sir, maybe no one is killing them. So what happened to them? Mr. Robash? It's not so very long since there were witch trials in Europe. You're not suggesting witchcrafts behind all this? Of course not, sir. You know my thoughts on such things. Indeed. Peasant superstition. But if witchcraft itself is a fantasy, the trials were not. Nor were the fires the poor wretches died in. Just so. And some went to those fires willingly. What are you saying? Three of my men put themselves overboard? Three suicides? Perhaps not suicide as we normally understand it. But during that terror, a kind of madness grew up. Delusion. Women and men were convinced that witchery was real. That their neighbors were witches. That their families were. Even themselves. Delusion, sir. It can be contagious. Ingenious. But maybe it's simpler than that. Whose razor is it we are supposed to use when faced with a conundrum? Occam's razor, sir. Entities should not be multiplied without necessity. That's it. When you're trying to solve a problem, make as few assumptions as you must. Economy of logic. Three men have died on this ship in a matter of days. A reasonable assumption that they are dead. And let's also assume someone killed them. You've searched the ship, every corner from stem to stern, no stowaway, no murdering stranger. So logic suggests... That had occurred to me, one of the crew. But they seem so united in their... Peasant delusion. Double watch again, Mr. Robash. Parkov and Dalsky. Parkov and Dalsky, yes, sir. They're good men. And I'm of peasant stock myself, sir. So am I. If you have any trouble, I'll be in my cabin. I think that creature's in here again. 
Can I see? Can I see? Where are you? Bring a light, man. I need light. The voice of the Lord makes flames of fire. The voice of the Lord. Oh, damn. Have you forgotten how low your own cabin beams are? <laughs> Wake up, man. Why no light? Kaneski, where in God's name are you? Where am I come to that? Mr. Robash! Bretov! Stand to someone and explain this darkness! Anyone! You're in the port gangway, of course. Are you lost in your own ship? Well, then, then the ladder must be... Well uh, done. Up you go. Uh, to the stern hatchway. The ladder to the stern hatchway. I cannot be lost in my own ship. Demeter, mother, giver of corn, giver of life, mother. You pray to a pagan hussy. Mother of Christ the Lord, the Lord is king. Above the flood, the Lord will give strength to his people. <laughs> voice of the Lord echoes over the waters. Yes. The Lord is over the mighty waters. Yes. In his temple all cry. Glory and blood. Starsky! Parkov! Stand to the watch! Speak out! Darkness and fog. Blindness. By day the wind. By night the fog. Strange waters. Starsky! Parkov! Is there no one there? No one? I am with you always. Glory and blood. Captain Rapelsky. Ah! Captain. Robash. Are you all right, sir? They're gone. Dalsky and Parkov are gone. What are you staring for, man? I tell you, they're gone. That leaves only four of us. I think you should go below, sir. Have Kaneski see to you. See to me. You have a wound on your forehead. Huh? I, I stuck it on a beam in my cabin. In your own cabin? Sir. Yes, damn it, in my own cabin. I got lost on my own ship. It's coming on to blow, sir. And the rain is thickening. Day. You're wearing only your nightshirt. Will you go below now? You're gonna have quite a bruise there, sir. But the cut is shallow. Oh, what need of a ship's surgeon when we have Kareski here? Surely I have the touch. We're moving at a good rate of knots. Who's at the wheel, Brett of? Mr. Robash. Of course. And there is no one else, is there? And drink more of that coffee, sir. Hot and strong and sweet. Put some rum in it. Oh. I know what time of day it is, Kaneski, but put a sizable shot of rum in here. So, what now? Four of us. Well, if I might suggest, sir, first thing is we break out the weapons. <laughs> break out the weapons? Now, this isn't a warship, but we have what? One pistol and a couple of knives? And Mr. Robash, I think, still has the pistol. Tonight, he and I will stand watch. Room enough for seven in here, and it's just us two. You have them pacing. I hear them. You're fond of that cat. And surely. And he of me. Johnny. What kind of name is that? Mm, the Irish. He's named for a man I knew. You named your cat after an Irishman. Special cat, special man. How special? The man, I mean. Well, he was clever. He, he taught me a lot. But m more than clever, wise. A wise, seagoing Irishman. 
Oh, I suppose there are such creatures. He was more a farmer than a sailor. Lived in a place near Cork with his brother and his sister-in-law. <laughs> beautiful place. Ireland is a beautiful place. I've never been. Now, Johnny took me there a couple of summers. Cats. <laughs> he had a dozen of them. A score. And this Johnny here is the son of one of them. So, how did you meet this wise Irish farmer? Well, every now and then, for the money and the travel, he'd, he'd go to sea. He was on a Russian ship I joined in Riga. I wasn't much more than a boy. He was 20 years older. He looked out for me. And now? Dead. He died of the lash. The lash? How many strokes? 50. Well, a government ship, then. Well, the sentence was 50, but... His heart gave out at 43. 50 strokes. For? For the crime of loving a man. I survived the 50, being young and strong. We are moving, sir. Just barely. Barely discernible. As if the fog were moving with us. An outlandish thought for a man of science like yourself, Mr. Robash. I try to be a man of reason, sir. But science, yes. Isaac Newton, the Englishman. The greatest man who ever lived, in my view. Greater than Christ? Was he a man, sir? And God? The Lord who is over the mighty waters. Where does he stand in your reasoned, scientific view of things? My father was a godly man. His God was the angry, jealous God. Your father in heaven, sir, gave his son up to die. My father merely beat his daily, nightly, fiercely. For no reason the son could ever understand. City boy, Moscow. My father was an important man there, known throughout, respected throughout. He dealt in vodka and whores and sometimes guns, and he had gambling places all over. Of course, a man like that, not entirely popular. <laughs> respected, maybe, but not not lovable. Uh, rivals, enemies, gangs of them. There were regular wars, and those battles were something to see and hear. And smell. Guns, knives, swords, hammers. Being his son, of course, I was brought up to be his lieutenant as well. One particular claw hammer, one particular skull. She was a pretty one, too, for her age. She? She. So I took to the sea for my nerves, for some peace and quiet. Well, quiet enough up there. Uh, you sailed with the captain before? Well, a dozen times. Uh, as, as captain. He was first mate when I took the flogging. First mate? Mm. I mean, he would never have given the order, but he carried it out. So he did Johnny too? Surely. Uh, under orders. Mm. As my father gave the order. About the pretty one. In her fifties, but pretty. One blow should have done it, to the most. But I got my nerves. They that night they got monstrous. You still have my gun, Mister Robash. Yes, sir. What is there to shoot? Nothing but fog. And if the wind gets fierce again tomorrow, we'll have to run before it. If we lower the sails... We've not enough men to raise them again. Who's killing them, Robash? I don't know. All done in silence. Certainly no gunshots. No disturbance at all. No bodies. No sign of violence. Not a trace of blood. 
he'd blood on his nightshirt. <laughs> From the knock on his head. Uh, which he did on a beam in his own cabin, which he's been in for years. Bretto. He's found alone on deck with blood on his shirt. No. Two men that time. Dalsky and Parkoff. <sighs> Big lads. They could have put up more of a fight. Not the captain. It killed your friend Johnny. And not on purpose and under orders. Look, the captain would never be... What, monstrous? It's not me can escape. Surely, and, and it's not me. So who does that leave? What, what, wipe out the crew one by one till he's left alone to manage the ship. It's an extravagant way to kill himself. The scientific one is deranged. Good God. What's the matter? He's going mad. Johnny, Johnny, come here. Screaming mad. Calm down, Johnny. This whole ship's gone mad. Let's get into that creature now. Captain. I think we might have taken by the tail and Kinesky's over fond of the beast. Captain, do you feel what? The temperature. The cold. Yes. It dropped suddenly in a moment. I felt it in my hands. Like a grip. As I have gloves, but and my face. It's falling still. Fast. What is this? It's like an Arctic waters. Captain. The Lord. Cold or still. What is this, Captain? The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord. What are you saying, Rapelski? In his temple, all cry, glory and blood. It's easy. Definitely. Passing over. Whatever it was. I can move my fingers again. Look, can't see my breath now. I've never known cold like that south of the Barents. And here we are, approaching England. There is an explanation for this. Surely. And you know what it is, sir? No, but it has to be something. Scientific. Yes, some kind of atmospheric phenomenon. What kind? Or some kind of current. It, it enveloped the ship. What current can freeze a ship so quickly and in these waters? Some kind of something scientific. There is an explanation. No doubt. Well, maybe an iceberg drifted close to us in the fog. Drifted all the way to the North Sea. Cold like that, it would have to be a herd of them. Surely. Can I see this? Surely, on yours. This surely, surely, Mr. surely. Surely. He uses the word incessantly. Sorry, sir. Verbal habit. And control it. And Captain Rapelski, yes, on deck when the cold hit us, you said the Lord is over the mighty waters. Did I? I remember that line from boyhood. It's Psalm 28. 29. But I don't remember quoting it. Then you said, in his temple all cry glory and blood. The line is, in his temple all cry glory. No blood. That line is from a dream, a voice in my dream. Your dream, sir. I insist again, it is the reason we must look for a way through this, not voices and dreams. Mr. Robash, you may go to your quarters now and try to get some sleep. You too, Mr. Kaneski. Mr. Bretov, you go on deck. On deck? We've been drifting too long. Just keep us steady, as close to west by west as you can hold her. I have the log to write. We must keep as clear a record of all this as we can. Yes, yes. sir. Kaneski? May I have a word, sir? What about? Johnny, sir. Uh, the cat, Johnny. Well, that damned creature. I, I haven't seen him since... Since it went mad. Well, he had his reasons. I think you'll agree. I'd like to find him before I go to my quarters. He must be terrified. It's only a cat. He's Johnny's cat, sir. Well, the son of one of his cats. Fond of him, sir. Permission to look for him? Surely. Try to get some sleep, the old man says. And who am I to do that? Captain's orders. Sleep and dream of paradise. How do you sleep in a ship that's gone insane? Maybe I could do as the old man does with his lord over the waters and his glory and blood. Pray to my father in heaven 
to my father in his wormy Romanian grave. My father, who art in corruption, spat on be thy name. Remember, old fool, miserable tyrant, when I came home from university? Home for my brother's wedding? And what a best man speech I gave that day. Best man indeed. I stood up in front of the whole village and denounced you. Reviled you. Revealed you as the ignorant, cowardly, impotent fool you were. There it all was in my brother's clammy sweat, his clenched fist, in his bride's red brow. There it was in the flickering eyes of my cowed, unfulfilled mother, in the eyes of all the village. There it was, the truth. They spoke for an hour, they told me later, and no one tried to interrupt. My education, my courage born of understanding, my eloquence and passion brought your humiliation, destruction, death. Dead within a year of that day. I went back once more, did you know? No, probably not, but, but I did. I went back to piss on the Romanian earth of your wormy grave. Education. Understanding. Power. Johnny, here, Johnny. God, it's still bitter out here. You're not here looking for the car, are you? Yes. Oh, you're mad. Well, who isn't here? Johnny, come on, Johnny. You could be in your bunk. Oh, I know. Sleeping like a baby with dreams of paradise. I'll try the hold. You're not going down in there alone. But uh, you advise me to keep to the safe places on this ship. And where might they be, huh? Johnny, here, kitty. Here, kitty. Come on, Johnny. Oh, mad. Kineski. Who's there? Speak out. Who's there? I said, speak out. Speak or... Oh, oh dear God. No. Please, sir. Don't. I know, you're right. I deserve it. The claw hammer, the skull, and she was pretty, but I was under orders. It was father's order. And my nerves, I lost control. All of that blood, monstrous. But please, sir, where are you going, sir? Am I to come with you? Am I forgiven? Johnny? Oh, come on, cat. Where are you? Here, kitty. It's all right now. Out you come. Here, Johnny. Johnny? Richard, who's at the wheel? No one, sir. Unless he is the gentleman. Gentleman? He's dressed like one. And whoever he is, he's big, tall, broad shoulders. A stranger. You spoke with him. I, I believe I said something, sir, but I don't, I don't recollect what. And he said nothing. He didn't have to. He just looked at me and smiled. Smiled, Bretov. We've all been through a dreadful time. He's real, Captain Rapelsky. I felt his breath. He came that close. 
I felt it and smelled it. Where's Mr. Robash? How does I know in his cabin? And Kineski? He went down in the hole looking for Johnny. Fetch Robash. He's got the gun and meet me in the hole. Johnny! Oh, come on, Johnny! Johnny? Oh, there you are. Out you come. Why oh, show your teeth at me, old chum? It's your old friend, Kineski. Come to me. Well, what's the matter with you? Bretov? In the name of God! Kineski, can you hear me? Kineski, his breathing's regular. There's hardly a mark on him. Bruising on the neck, like he's been gripped there. Why is he smiling? It doesn't look like Kineski, a smile like that. Gives me the creeps. Maybe he's dreaming. He dreams of paradise. What? Captain, let's go home. Don't be ridiculous, Bretov. We're almost in England. And someone doesn't want us to get we there. We have to go on. With the jolly boat, then. Room for four in that. I say we abandon the ship. We stay with the Demeter. Which has a devil aboard. A devil killing the crew one by one. Then he passes Bretov here with a smile. Kineski, he attacks, but lets him live. What kind of devil is that? Like he's playing with us. Oh, the mouse's back is broken. The cat plays on. Go on, deck, both of you. So, Bretov, you met our guest? Yes, sir. A tall, smiling, broad-shouldered gentleman. That's right. And where would such a fellow hide on a schooner like this? I don't know. Well, they do say the devil's a gentleman. And you called him a devil. He smiled like one. You don't believe me? I don't believe in devils, Bretov. No God, no Satan. Isn't that logical? I do believe in the madness of men. I saw him. I smelled him. And what did he smell like? Earth and blood. Oh, blood. There's been a lot of talk about blood on this ship. Blood and madness. Are you saying I'm mad, Mr. Robash? Maybe we all are, as in a contagion. Even me. I aspire to have a mind as limpid and cool as a calm sea. But I fear I fall short. I fear I may stumble like any other fool into irrational ways. Even the great Newton. Even he... I do fear it. Mr. Robash. Sir. You should come below and see Kineski. I, I change? Come and see. I feel fine. I'm just so thirsty. <clears throat> what happened? You seem to have been attacked. Attacked? Uh, someone had you by the throat. There's bruising there. Look again, Mr. Robash. But how can that... Maybe it was never there. You saw it, Mr. Robash. Livid bruises. So I did. But real bruising doesn't disappear so quickly. Therefore, it wasn't real. Did you see anyone, Kineski? A stranger? No, not that I remember. What do you remember? I was looking for Johnny. Has he turned up yet? No. You remember nothing? It was just some horrible dream. There were these eggs, huge things, dozens of them. But there were coffins at the same time. I, I knew there were eggs and coffins at the same time, like you do in a dream. Believe mad stuff. And something about smothering her. But my neck's fine and I'm fine. And I'm hungry. And so am I. All four of us will dine in my cabin. All four? And leave no one on watch? It'll be dark soon and then, no doubt, fog and a calm sea. No doubt. We'll cast both anchors and light all the storm lanterns and all dine together. The first thing I'm going to do when we get ashore is have some decent food. I do my best with what I've got, Mr. Robash. And what he's got is mutton here. Hmm. Maybe Johnny will appear when he smells the food. Uh, if he's really hungry. Mr. Robash, from what you say, you do think we are going to get ashore? We must believe so. Believe? You mean have faith? I mean believe in our skills as seamen and of discipline. Indeed. And maybe things are changing. Changing? How? Well... 
He just walked by me. With a gentlemanly smile. Did it? There is someone on board, Kineski, I saw him. Well, what did he look like? A devilish gentleman. The, the point is, he didn't hurt me. And here's Kineski woofing into his mutton and biscuits, so maybe he's changed. The gentleman. Oh, he'll show mercy to us for, will he? Goodness and mercy. The voice of the Lord is... Power, majesty. You still don't know what you're dealing with. Do you? What did you say? That voice. Majesty. Glory. And blood. What game is this, Kineski? Why are you talking like that? Like what? I didn't say a word. Yes, you did. No, I'm too busy wolfing my mutton. Which is disgusting. <laughs> Fools. Weak and maundering fools. You, Captain, will see His Majesty soon and bow down. And you, Bretov, do you think that because the Lord smiles on you once, he won't tear out your throat at your next meeting? Dear God, no, Bretov. And drink you like burgundy. Kaneski, please. Get out of my way, Bretov. You heard the officer, Bretov. Out of our way. There, Robash. You and I, face to face. You are a madman. And what a pretty little gun. Silver bullets by any chance? <coughs> Mr. Rubas! No, Rubas! The voice of the Lord echoes over the mighty waters. In his temple all cry glory. Captain! And blood. Captain Rapelski! Uh, we commit his body to the deep, looking for the resurrection when the sea shall give up her dead. Let him go. Run before the wind, Mr. Robash. All we can do, run before the wind. Kaneski was going to kill you, Bretov. And then try to kill me, maybe all of us. I had no choice. Yes, sir. Discipline, sir. Kaneski was our killer. I can't believe that. Apart from anything else, who attacked him? His false wounds were self-inflicted. A lunatic game. But, Mr. Robash, I saw the other. My duty was clear. To save your life from a madman. Your life may be a small one. Surely. What? However insignificant you are, a member of this crew, and as such, I, as first mate... Mr. Robash. What is it, sir? <gasps> Do you see him? Do you? Mr. Robash, what are you doing? No, you mustn't. Don't. He simply took the gun. He held out his hand to me and I gave it to him. I, I do apologize, sir, a momentary loss of discipline. Instantly regretted it. It will not happen again. So. What does happen? It's you and I now, Mr. Robash, and our guest. Why is he here? Well, why this ship? Well, how can we explain the ways of a devil? All we know about the devil is that he makes mischief. He's without mercy, and he can take possession of a man. He is a man. He is material. I saw him snap Bretoff's neck. Heard it. There is no devil. Newton said we must not seek from uncertain conjecture, but learn from observation and experiment. This Newton of yours, he believed in God, did he not? Would he not believe in the devil, too? He was off his time in that, sir, but in his intellect for all time. The, the, the Demeter is an ordinary schooner, plying ordinary trade. If this monster, let's call him, has chosen this ship, the reason has to lie in that trade. Or in one of us? A cargo! Twenty-five large wooden crates. Containing soil of some kind. Soil? For what purpose? Well, I have no idea. Horticulture, maybe? Is there something unique in your homeland, Earth? They came from Romania. Who takes delivery? Some English lawyer. Um, yes. SF Billington, Seven the Crescent Whitby, which tells us nothing as to purpose. They were loaded in Varna? Yes. And before that? They came from Bistritz, got there by wagon, I believe, from somewhere in the east, in the Carpathians. The Borgo Pass, a castle, no less. Maybe the Count dabbles in horticulture. Count? A Count Dracula. Mr. Robash? Cool. Dracula. Dracula means dragon. Dra Dracula, son of the dragon, of course. 
That's who he is. But you think this Count Dracula is on my ship? Yes. Of course, he, he, he can't be. He, he cannot exist. But he's, he's here. This is a strange conundrum, sir. Indeed. An imaginary creature from the bloody tales of our peasant forefathers made flesh on your ship. Where on the ship? In one of those boxes. They're as big as coffins. Whose lids are nailed down. Nails won't hold him. Not the likes of him. Who doesn't exist. Of course not. But he's here. <laughs> I'll go down there in the morning, use observation, experiment, find material evidence. You said he was material. A man who's been murdering my crew. And by my observation, there are only two men left on this ship, and I haven't been murdering my crew. You think I have? Then we must both keep watch tonight, Captain. Keep watch on each other. And in the morning, I'll give you material evidence. Every body continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line, unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed on it. The alteration of motion. Earth. Loamy Romanian earth. The stuff my father lies in. To every action, there is always opposed an equal reaction. Or the mutual actions of two bodies upon each other are always equal and directed to contrary parts. <laughs> Impossible. But here, the changing of bodies into light and light into bodies, that, that is nature, which, which seems happy with transmutations. So said Isaac Newton. <sighs> Flesh. Uh, here. But not in nature. Material, but impossible. And asleep. Smiling at your hellish dreams. Come with me, Captain, off this ship. You want to take our chances in the jolly boat? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Into the sea. Into the sea? You won't last ten minutes. Less, I hope. You found him nailed into one of the boxes. Lying in state in his own Romanian earth. Dead? Asleep. I suppose we must call it that. Well, then you could have... Bound him? Killed him? No, no. How can you bind or kill that which isn't truly alive? I did nail down the lid again, but of course that, that won't matter. Come nightfall, transmutation, you see. Bodies into light, Newtonian. Robash, come with me. We know the sea, you and I. That we understand. Let's die like sailors in good, clean, cold water. I will not leave the Demeter. The ship is... What? All I have. And goodbye. Mr. Robash. Goodbye, Captain Nikolsky. Robash, listen. Mr. Robash. Mr. Robash, are you there? Is this your final murder? To leave me alone? Are you down here, Robash? With our guest? Our mysterious gentleman? Where is he then? Which of these nailed down crates does he sleep in? Count Dracula! Can you hear me, sir? If Robash has left me alone on the ship, so be it. If he's left me here with you, let us introduce ourselves. Good evening, Captain. <laughs> Robash! Listen, sir. Night has fallen. He is risen. Stay back, or I'll gut you like a fish. No, sir. He'll take you. He would know you. Know me? I know him. You're a son of a dragon. The only monster in this ship is you. You who said he would take to the good, clean sea. And yet you skunk down here like the mad killer you are. But I did take to the sea, the good, clean sea. And then, at the very moment of drowning, I was taken. Most remarkable. Taken? By whom? By what? Robash, listen. Help me to bring the ship in. We can't be far from Whitby. Redeem yourself. Redemption. Yes, by doing your duty, by helping me do mine. Empiricism, the belief that only knowledge acquired through direct experience 
Maybe accept it and have knowledge of me, Captain. Dear God. Know and believe, fool. Behold, I am risen, and I will know you. The Lord is all of the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is power. The voice of the Lord is majesty. The Lord will give strength to his people. He is a tedious fellow, Robash. Is he not? Who are you? You know, he claims to have killed his old tyrant of a father with no more than eloquence and learning. Delivered as a best man speech. Why did you kill my men? His supposedly spellbound audience was no doubt nearly mortified with boredom and embarrassment. Why? Self-deluded fool. And he reviles delusion and superstition. They can be contagious, sir. Entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily. It is reason we need. And discipline. Who in God's name are you? The Lord whose voice is power. Blasphemy! Blasphemy! Captain! The ship is adrift! You do not be taking command! Discipline, Captain! A rather flimsy barricade, Captain. Oh, forgive me. Did I startle you? Steady yourself now. We don't want you bumping your head in your own cabin roof beams again. What do you want with me? To know you. Know me? Yes. You are not so easily fathomed as the others. They were shallow. And why? Why did I kill? Well, mischief, I suppose. Sustenance, too, of course. Sustenance? Although one or two would have been enough for that. Yes, mischief. And, of course, they deserved it. Bretov, for instance. Do you know what he did? He killed a woman. A pretty one, sir. No longer young, but a good looker. But I was under orders. Just like you, Captain. With Kadeski's lover. And he did the deed with a claw hammer. One blow should have done it. Two at the most, but my nerves, you see, that night they got monstrous, sir, monstrous. That's Moscow city life for you. Monstrous. Just so. But come now. You really ought to be on deck. Shall I remove the barricade for you? All clear. Carry on. Oh, there you are, Captain. Good to see you at the wheel again. I'm sure you'll bring us safely to landfall. And there's still time for me to unravel your secret. Secret? You are a puzzle to me. And what are you? Flesh and blood? Oh, indeed. God damn you. And bone. Yeah, some kind of man. Who would be a man befogged by conscience, remorse, delusions of morality? Count Dracula. Or Dracul, or whatever you call yourself. The son of a dragon. It's true, the word comes from the Latin root meaning dragon. It can also mean demon. You claim to be a demon? I am that I am. Blasphemy. That is God's word. Call me Legion, then. For I am many. Behold, ye of little faith. <laughs> Captain, you can drown in ballast sand just like in water. You are not Kaneski. Surely, the man whose lover you killed? No, I saw Kaneski shot. The only man I ever loved. I saw him dead and given to the sea, and I saw him, it, you, become on the deck of my ship. What did he become? Something, I don't know, like nothing on earth. Something from another world. From hell, maybe. Well, the Lord is changeable. What are you? We are many. And we did wonder about Johnny. I had no choice. And you know it. Kaneski knew it and understood. If I had refused to flog Johnny, it would have been mutiny. But did you 
Unwillingly, maybe, even to your own horror, did you enjoy it? That would be forgivable. You couldn't help yourself. Couldn't help feeling a certain thrill. Is that your secret? You are a demon. And you are a captain. You should not be crawling around down here in the bowels of your ship. You should be on deck. I have it, Captain. I think I have it. Your secret. Oh, my. Now, that is impressive. You no longer merely do your duty and stay at the wheel. You're fastened to it. Did you manage that yourself? Well, of course, you must have. And you must have used your teeth to finish those knots. Most impressive sailor skills. And the crucifix. That's a nice, exotic peasant touch. The godly captain, bound to his wheel by rope and beads and faith. In the name of the true lord, I abjure you. Such faith. I defy you. With that trinket of superstition? No. In the name of the lord and his... But take it from me. Take the cross. Oh, you may clutch it if you wish. You dare not. If you take comfort in the image of an instrument of torture. I defy you. In the name of the Lord and his passion and his resurrection. Resurrection, yes. Shall I tell you my secret? You dare not touch it or me. The box is in your hold. In England, they will be as coffins and receive corpses. Then they will be as eggs from which will be hatched from which will be resurrected my servants, my disciples, to spread my gospel of glory and blood. We are closing on England. Are we? My sailor skills tell me so. We should make landfall in an hour or two. Good. But that landfall will not be the port of Whitby. I'll use all my skill to make sure it's rocks and cliffs and the drowning of the ship. Well, now, look who's here. It's dear old Johnny. Up you come. See, Johnny. See, here's your skipper. Say hello. I'll drown you <laughs> and that creature both. I determine the ship's course. I and the wind and the mighty waters which obey the voice of their lord. Do you hear, fool? I'll fight you. You and the sea. The wind, too. Such bluster. To go ashore, Cat, I must take another fall. You dare not touch me now, and this ship will answer my touch. A dog this time, I think. How would that be, Johnny, if I became a great black ferocious dog? What games we'll have. Monster! You have lost all, Captain. Oh, I've lost much, but not all. All that's left is thin blood and a stumbling heart. I lost my mother. In a fire when you were six. And father. Ox cart, drink, ravine. Wife and children, too. Ah, your own drinking. Left you for a barber in midst. I've lost money and ambition and much of my pride. I've felt the loss of God like death itself. And there it is. There is your secret. Your secret is nothing. No God, no faith, nothing. Nothing but a graven image in your shaking hand. Which you cannot touch. And I still have this ship. Owned by a Jew merchant in St. Petersburg. I'm her master. Captain. Captain of my own soul. Sail on, old oh man. The spirit in you yet. I have a sailor's skill and a sailor's knowledge, and I'm captain of this ship, God damn you. Sail on. I have the Demeter. I have blood in my veins and hatred in my heart for you, son of hell. And I have dreams of paradise. Captain Rapelski. Oh, dear. Shame. He was becoming almost interesting. I could have taken him, you know. I could. It's not the cross that has power. It's the faith behind it. And his was weak. Oh, yes, I could have taken him. Now, believe me, Cat. Come on. Let you and I, my pet, my little appetizer. Let's go below and prepare for landfall. From the Daily Graph, 8th of August, 1895. 
One of the greatest storms on record has recently been experienced here, with a result both strange and unique. A Russian schooner, the Demeter, with all sails set, came rushing at headlong speed out of the tempest and pitched herself on the sand and gravel under the east cliff. At the very instant the shore was touched, an immense dog sprang up on deck from below and leapt from the bow onto land. It then vanished among the tombstones of the nearby churchyard. Stranger still, only one man was discovered aboard. A corpse fastened by his hands with cords to the ship's wheel. Between the inner hand and the wood was a crucifix, its set of beads wrapped around both wrists and wheel. The lifeless steersman, of course, was reverently carried from the place where he had kept his honourable and steadfast watch until death. However, this being England, as much interest is abroad concerning the ship's mysterious dog, and more than a few members of the SPCA, which is very strong in Whitby, have tried to locate and befriend the animal. To great and general disappointment, it has not yet been found. Voyage of the Demeter was written by Robert Forrest, with Finlay Welsh as Rapelski, Gary Lewis as Robash, Stephen McNichol as Kaneski, Grant O'Rourke as Bretov, and Alexander Morton as The Gentleman.